Hi everyone! Welcome to Soup Dog Recipes. Today we're making Duo Jiao Ji Ding. Duo Jiao means chopped chili sauce, a traditional Chinese ingredient. Once you made it, you're gonna want to put it on everything. <laughs> it's that good. Ji Ding means diced chicken, so the name is pretty straightforward. This is also a Hunan style dish. I call it mom's flavor <laughs> because I grew up with it. So let's get started. We're gonna make duo jiao first. You can buy this ingredient in a Chinese grocery store if you don't want to take the time to make it. But I prefer to make it myself since it's so simple and there is no preservative or flavor enhancer in the homemade version. It looks a little scary because so many chilies in there. That's the thing about making your own at home. You can always adjust the heat to your own preference. I got some fresh red chilies here. They're nice and clean. I'm gonna use a salad spinner to get rid of the moisture, but it is not completely dry. So I will just let them sit for an hour. If you don't have a salad spinner, you probably have to wait for four hours for the moisture to dry out. Peel a piece of ginger about one and a half inch. Roughly cut it into small pieces. Put it in the blender, follow up with 25 cloves of garlic, about two and a half head. Let's get back and check the chilies. They should be completely dry now. Remove all the stems. If you want the sauce to be less spicy, you can remove the seeds. I'm keeping the seeds because this is not spicy enough for me. I also decided to use 10 to 12 pieces of these Thai bird's eye chilies just to make it hotter. They were frozen, I didn't have fresh ones today, but it should work just as good. Remove the stems and put it in the food processor. Add the other chilies. My food processor is a little small. It's okay, we can blend the chilies in two batches. Use the on and off mode. Do not blend everything into puree. We still want to keep some texture. Put that into a big bowl. Keep doing the other batch of chilies. Traditionally, we make this recipe by using heavy duty cleavers to chop up all the ingredients. Food processor does an amazing job. Fast and easy. Why not? Next, we'll add the seasonings. Super simple. Five to six tablespoons of salt. 3 tablespoons of sugar, 1.5 tablespoons of high alcohol content liquor, any brand and type that the alcohol content is above 30% will work. It acts like a bacteria inhibitor. If you can't take alcohol for some reasons, you can use the same amount of lemon juice. Mix them well or until you can see the bottom of the bowl starts appearing some liquid. Cover it with a plastic film and let it sit at room temperature overnight. The next day, get two clean jars. Rinse it with a little bit liquor. If you can't use alcohol, you can boil the containers and bake them in a 150 degrees Fahrenheit oven for 5 to 8 minutes or until the containers are completely dry. We will also need a spoon, so rinse the spoon as well. Open the plastic film. Immediately, you should smell that nice fermented garlicky chili flavor. Store this in the glass container. Don't fill it all the way full. Leave one eighth of the space, or else the chili sauce will overflow during the fermenting process. Oh, one more optional step. You can wet a piece of paper towel with some liquor and use that to clean up the edge of the jar. Cover it. And you are done! The first week, you should keep it at room temperature to encourage the fermentation. After that, you can keep it in the fridge, it should stay good for more than half a year. A week later, you have your chopped chili sauce made. There are so many Chinese recipes that ask for this ingredient. Today, we'll use it to make duo jiao ji ding, quick, easy, and delicious. Two pieces of chicken breast about one pound. Slice the breast into these a quarter of an inch thick pieces. Then cut each piece into thin strips. If you like dark meat, boneless chicken thigh is great. 
Of course, you can also use ground beef or pork. If you're a vegetarian, eggplant and tofu are great choices. The size that the chicken is cut, we call it ji ding in Chinese, kind of like rough dice. Season the chicken with one and a half tablespoon of soy sauce. This is Chinese fermented bean curd. We call it fu ru, also known as Chinese cheese. I have used it in my braised pork trotter recipe and rice powder steamed pork recipe. I bought it not so long ago. It's almost finished. Only got a little bit left in the jar. Just enough for this recipe. How lucky I am! I also like to scoop a little bit of that flavorful oil. That is some extra deliciousness. Keep adding one teaspoon of sugar. It's optional, but this is going to be a flavorful dish, so a subtle sweetness will help to balance the flavor. A quarter teaspoon of baking soda to tenderize the meat. Sprinkle it here and there. Some salt to taste. You can adjust the saltiness at the end, but I made this dish many times, so I know exactly what my preference is. Mix everything until well combined. Cover it and let it sit for 20 minutes. Besides the protein, I also like to add some celery, two stalks. Stack them together, cut it into these triangle-shaped pieces. Celery provides some freshness and crunchiness to the dish. Very nice. I got so many people asking me, why is my food sticking to my carbon steel wok? Well, that's a good question. Today I will talk about how to control the wok heat and how to cook with a carbon steel wok correctly. Start with heating your wok. When you see there is light smoke appearing, you can add the oil. I used pretty much a lot of chicken, so I will be generous with the oil amount. About three tablespoon. Give it a toss so the oil can create a non-stick surface on the bottom. Wait until you see it starts smoking again. That means the wok is hot enough. Add the chicken. Spread it so most pieces touch the bottom of the wok. Do not stir and flip the meat immediately, or else it will stick to the wok immediately. When cooking with a carbon steel wok, you have to wait. And let one side of the chicken to sear. You might wonder why do the Chinese restaurant chefs always toss and stir the food quickly? That is because their stove flame is super high. Some can go up to a hundred thousand BTU. That means the meat sears immediately. If you use a normal home cooking stove, which goes to ten to twenty thousand BTU, the meat doesn't sear that fast. So you will have to wait. The waiting could take anywhere between 30 seconds to a couple minutes, depends on your stove. Look at this. It didn't stick at all. You can see a bit of that light brown color. Beautiful. Now I'm just separating the meat again and let the other side to sear. That is how you control the wok heat when using a home cooking stove. Of course. It also depends on what recipe you are making and what kind of ingredients you are using. We'll talk about that in the future. If you know how to use a carbon steel wok correctly, it will surprise you with its amazing performance. If you don't have one yet, consider buying my Hammered Mark carbon steel wok. I just launched this product not so long ago. The link is in the description. You can go check it out if you need it. By the way. Don't try to brown the chicken too much unless you have a high heat burner. The chicken pieces are so small; you don't want them to dry out. Like that is good. Push all the chicken to the side. If you have some grease at the bottom, you don't need to add more oil. This looks a bit dry, so I will just drizzle a couple teaspoon in there. Because you do need some oil to activate the flavor of the chopped chili sauce. And don't be scared with that amount of chilies, because after the fermentation, the chili becomes much more gentle and more flavorful at the same time. If you stir this amount of fresh chilies, you will be coughing while cooking. But this smells nice, actually. After one minute of stirring, you can add the celery, mix them together. Celery takes a bit time to cook, so I will use the chicken to cover it. 
and turn the heat to medium low. Let it cook for a minute or two. Pour in half cup of cornstarch water from the side of the wok. Turn the heat back to medium high. Keep mixing this until the sauce thickens a little bit. Taste to adjust the flavor. Mine is good. Take them out, and you are done. Simply serve it with some white rice. I love this dish. As a meat eater, nothing is better than a plate that is full of this spicy, savory, boneless chicken breast. I also add a fried egg. It's a little crispy. That is how most Chinese people prefer their eggs. It's also a bit runny, just the way I like. That plate right there is a perfect dinner. It brings me back home immediately. This is a true rice killer recipe. Normally, I can only eat one bowl of rice, but if my mom made this dish, I can have three bowls of rice easily <laughs> because the sauce is so good. It makes the rice extra tasty. I hope you give this a try soon. If you did, leave me a comment. Let me know how it goes. As always, you can click the link in the description and find the printable recipe. If you're interested in my beautiful hammered mark carbon steel wok, the link is also in the description. Go take a look. If you already bought my wok, thank you for the purchasing. Make sure you watch my wok seasoning video to learn how to take care of it. Thank you for watching today, and I'll see you next time. Bye.